welcome back to the worm finally missed a week or two of videos I had to take my uh, four-wheeler out of here and do some work on it my yearly maintenance fix a few broken things and uh, over two weeks I was gone working on it waiting for parts everything and I finally freaked out and bought a new one <laughs> I'm probably the only guy you'll ever meet or or not meet that uses a four-wheeler every single day all day and isn't super excited about getting a new one I mean it's great fun but being the cheapest band in the wilderness I have a hard time spending money the, the good thing for you guys now is I'm I'm stuck out here for years. I can make a lot of videos to pay for a four-wheeler. I still love it out here. I don't foresee myself going anywhere anytime soon. So instead of taking weeks, having to leave here and do maintenance and order parts that aren't even available anymore, the other four-wheeler is just sitting in a garage right now. I can't even get the parts to fix it. I figure what the heck. I know, I know. I gotta, I gotta try to be more excited about this. Anyway, I got stuff I still wanna do in here. I got shelves to build, a whole bunch of fun weird stuff I want to put in here and I'm out of lumber and I figured this would be a good time to see what this machine can do. The other one that I had, the green one that I've had for the last couple of years is a 350. This is the exact same one just newer. It's a 420. The issue with the other one was never power. It's mostly traction especially pulling stuff in the snow or in the mud or whatever so I don't know. I don't really have any comparison. I don't know how this is going to do but I think we should go pull some trees. This property is 100% wooded. All the area, the kind of cleared out areas you see here, stuff I took down solely so it wouldn't fall on the stuff that I was building. And then of course I milled the logs into lumber to build these things. But I kind of want to have one small spot on the property that's not wooded. I'd like a little field. It'd be cool for, you know, in the next month you start getting some sunny days, but it's still only 12 degrees. It'd be really cool to have a place to go and like stand in the sun and actually get warmed up. And the other advantage making a field is I'd have all that lumber that I take down to build more ridiculous stuff. So I was kind of driving around yesterday looking, trying to think of like where it would be a cool place to do it. And I realized before I go making just a field, there are a bunch of trees that I want to take down because as you guys know, I want to make a better shooting range. What I had uh, the last couple of years was just kind of, you know, cleared out a little path and put some targets at the end and built a little table. But I wanna clear the whole thing out. I really wanna be able to shoot clays out here. I love shooting shotguns. I've also got some rifles that I can't shoot out here cause there's, you know, it's such dense forest. Let's go for a cruise. By the way, I feel like I might uh, need to point out this red, not my choice. The day I decided I was going to do this, throw sanity to the wind and uh, buy a new four-wheeler, I called every single dealer in the state of Michigan and this is the only machine I could find. These are supposed to be Honda Ranchers, they're supposed to be like the most reliable four-wheeler. That's my understanding anyway. That's why I had the last one was a Rancher. This one's a rancher and that's all I really care about is the reliability. Doesn't need to go fast, doesn't need to have a lot of power. I just need it to run all the time. If I need groceries or I need water or gas or need to do laundry or need to go see someone, whatever, this is my only way in and out of here. I mean, I could walk out, I guess, but if I walk out, I'm stuck with uh, whatever I can carry on my back with two not so great knees. So the most important thing was reliability. However. I think the color sucks. So as soon as it warms up out here, I think I'm gonna take all this plastic off and paint it. <laughs> Is it gonna be professional? Not at all. It'll be uh, horrible looking, but at least it won't be red. I mean, look around out here. Red is not the color for these woods. Anyway, that'll be coming up. As soon as it's warm enough that I can paint the stuff and it'll actually dry. Okay, here's my plan. And by plan, I mean something that just crossed my mind. This is the entire shooting range. I made these little uh, yardage markers out here, I think last year. Got this little table, of course, with the chainsaw. I have a hard time setting anything on that table right now, aren't I? 
But I had a chain across a couple trees out there with some steel hanging on it. A couple other little targets. You could see the dueling tree out there maybe. I don't know if you can see that. You can hang paper on this and shoot playing cards and stuff. The reason the shooting range is here is because this is the only like abrupt hill I have here to shoot into. There's nobody around here probably ever for miles, but you know, you still want to know where your uh, bullets are going. I mean, not that I ever missed the target. So all that got carved out to make the shooting range is just this one path here. And the trail coming down to the shooting range is right there. So my thinking is since I need all the lumber and I want to be able to shoot clays and such out here, I think I'm gonna take all these trees out in between the shooting range over there and the path. Yeah, so there's a there's better part of eight or 10 trees right there that are good and not so much little stuff that I got rid of. I'll have to chip all the rest of these. Look at these creepy aspens. You don't even want to walk underneath this stuff. <laughs> How these things keep standing, I have no idea. Let's uh, rip out the chainsaw. I haven't worn my helmet in like two or three weeks. That's really bizarre too. It's not good to be gone from this place for that long. It's, I think by almost a factor of two, the longest I've been gone from here in two years. It's actually a little strange. It's like kind of hard to get back into the rhythm of uh, living out here and keeping your water from freezing and getting used to not showering. <laughs> A couple months since I cut any trees. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, here a couple days ago, and it's been way too cold to to film anything. And I think it's only today's like high 20s, and then the next few days are supposed to be uh, highs in the I think the mid teens or something. So they're only like <laughs> two hours of the day where I can actually get the camera out. And there's a 60% chance of uh, snow today. So okay, better get going. I'm gonna start with all the small ones, get them out of the way first, because those, if I cut it, they're all gonna get hung up, except for the ones on the outside of the solidly treed area. I could, if they're leaning the right way, I can get them to fall out into the open. That's fantastic. That's best case scenario. If they're tight together, then I'll often take the smallest, smallest ones down first. They'll fall like this, and then I can literally just yank the bottoms out and make them fall to the ground, or I can use the winch on the four-wheeler. And the more I can clear out easily by hand or with the winch, the less there is for the big ones to get stuck in. There are also some here, like this wouldn't be too, too hard to fall. If I got that out of the way, then it'd be easier to take this one down and that one down. And I could sort of peel them in that direction. It's nice that I have that open area there. That's actually a, a campsite I made the first year I was out here. I don't know if you can tell, probably not so much with the snow, but there is just no place flat anywhere around to set up a tent when I mean, you end up in a a tree well and with your head on a rock and something else poking you in the butt so i went ahead and flattened out a couple areas when i had gravel when i had the little tractor i leveled a couple spots out so people could set up tents but the good thing about that is now <laughs> nobody uses that but now i have a place to fall trees into so i can start from there actually i might leave one of these up as a pole to string a chain between for targets. Man, this is going to be a workout walking through this stuff. You guys are so unstable. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I kind of limb trees up differently depending on what I'm going to do with all the, the branches. 
I'm so sick of burning stuff. I think I got that out of my system. So I'm gonna chip the majority of this stuff. And because of that, it's a whole lot easier to take a branch if it comes up and has a big fat split on it. It's easier to cut that side limb off while it's still attached to the tree and then cut the main thing off than it is to cut the whole thing off, lay it on the ground and then have to dig through the snow with your bar and hope you don't hit anything. So like this, for instance, doesn't have any big fat secondary limbs going off, but if it had one here, it'd be easier just to nip it and then cut this thing off. And then I know everything laying on the ground could just pick up and go through the chipper. You don't, you don't care. Can't leave the treetops there because you want to throw clay pigeons up there, it'll be in the way. Didn't want to cut them to the ground because then I don't have anything to tie my chains and hang targets on, so I think that'll work pretty well. God, I'm smart sometimes, aren't I? <laughs> Jeez. Let's just go ahead and see how much this can pull up the hill. I guess if I get halfway and get stuck, I can unhook it or I could winch myself up. There's absolutely no reason to do this. I could just take two trips, but where's the fun in that, right? Yeah, no way. <laughs> Let's do it anyway. Wow, that's crazy. That's why every time it snows more than a couple inches, I drive the whole thing around like three or four passes and keep this thoroughly packed. You know, if you get off the path a little bit, it's just, uh, you sink right in. That was fantastic. That's downright blizzard right there. Those are some big flakes, holy moly. Unfortunately, it's gonna cover up all the branches I just cut and piled. You know, we all have our problems to deal with. Mine are just more extreme than yours are. Holy Moses, it is cold today. It snowed, I woke up about five o'clock, it was dumping snow and it snowed on and off till maybe 11 or so. And it's been, it looks like the wind's maybe dying down a little bit. It's been gusting over 30 for the day. So everything that was in the trees was coming down and I just thought, not a chance. I do not need to go out there when it's that cold and that windy and get soaked. So I hung out in here for the day, for the last couple hours anyway. It's great fun. I decided to stay in here just for this week. It's a lot of nights in the single digits, lower single digits, down down towards zero anyway. And, you know, that's uh, that's past where I'm comfortable being in the tent. And, I mean, plus, what did I build this thing for? I mean, in the winter, this is what it's for, to be in here when it's really cold at night. I'm finding quite quickly that this is the, uh, the premium space here. I keep water bottles. What else we got? My uh, soap that I use for hands and for dishes, batteries. Uh, none of these batteries work when it's below about 15 degrees unless I warm them up first. We got our uh, butt wipes there, all sorts of stuff. And if I, you know, it's always the foot of my sleeping bag that seems to get the wettest for some reason. Maybe my feet sweat or something and I can dry it out by doing that. But I really want to do something here that I can fit more stuff on so I can warm it up around the uh, stove and stove pipe. So I just decided uh, since the day is more than half gone, no sense in getting the chainsaws and everything out. I'll uh, get back to that the next couple days. It's supposed to be up near 30, which is perfect cutting weather. I'm gonna go ahead and break into this uh, 
wire mesh. I'm still not really sure what this is made for. Look at that for surrounding uh, natural stove pipes, it looks like. Oh, that's a tree. Well, it's about the same thing. So I'm not really sure how to do this. I do want to take a long piece of this, wrap it about like that, and put it around the pipe for starters. So I want to be able to like throw my sleeping bag on here, or my jacket, or my bibs, or whatever. And uh, first off, not burn them on there. I don't know if maybe I could see if I might have some scraps left from the uh, battens on the outside of this, which are, I can't remember what I cut them, an inch and a half or two inches by one. I think I might just do like, if you just do one somehow all the way up there and then somehow maybe some one by two framing for a couple shelves. <laughs> I don't, you know, I just don't know. I don't know. Let's just uh, cut into this thing and see. I was thinking maybe I can uh, hook all this stuff together with some chicken wire kind of stuff and... Maybe some staples. Staple it onto the frame. What size say staples do you think? Uh, let's go 3 8 eh? I think the big trick with this is going to be to make sure there's not a single end of that wire mesh sticking out because I'm pretty sure it's going to be like a down tornado in here the first time I throw my sleeping bag up there. Might as well throw on a podcast. See what we got today. Armchair expert. Sounds good. Ooh, whoa. Holy cow, that's like magic. Well, that's the weirdest thing I've seen today. I think I'm just gonna keep it like this. Okay. That's This stuff's actually kind of a pain in the butt to work with. It's got a lot more spring than I thought it was going to. It's okay though, I didn't have a lot else to do today. That worked out pretty well, I think. It's actually quite quite sturdy too. Uh, I don't really have a picture in my head of what I'm trying to do, so I guess I'll just start up as high as I can reach. Maybe do like a square frame there. I don't know how we'll get it to stay up there, but we'll figure something out. Let's go dig through the uh, scrap pile and see if we can find anything that'll work. Getting pretty well picked over. I think I do want to do, I was trying to think of uh, what I could use a little square table for. I have all these uh, leftover battens from the wall there. These are just the, the pieces that I didn't use. I was thinking of uh, laying them on edge and gluing them all together and doing like a butcher block table. If I can figure out some place to use a, I don't know, a lot of these scraps are only maybe a foot and a half, two feet long in here. If I could find a place for that little two foot square table, it'd be kind of cool. Maybe I'll do that. Oh, uh, I'm wearing my good clean gloves. Can't get sap on those. Somebody needs to uh, invent some self cleaning gloves. Maybe like the palms or they get up to like 380 degrees or something. You could just uh, click a button and it would burn all the stuff off. <laughs> I really like these, uh, all the work gloves I've used. These ironclad general are my favorite. So I've always got a clean pair and a dirty pair. And once the dirty pair, once my fingers start coming through the sides too much, then I throw them away and make the clean ones the dirty ones. But they get so sappy that, you know, I pick up some wood, do some work, whatever, and then I grab my cell phone or the camera or something, and that's got like a whole blob of sap on it. So I have to constantly be changing them. Yep, we all have our problems, don't we? 
There it is. That's what we need. Can't wait till spring. I can make some steps here. Oh, by the way, something really bizarre. Maybe it's not too bizarre to you. Maybe you intuit this or you've seen this before. So that side of the cabin is built on two stumps. I cut the trees off and that's the foundation there. The other side of the cabin is on rounds, cedar rounds that are right on the ground. Well, they're on little concrete pads, but they're right on the ground. When I built the frame for this, it was perfectly level. I leveled, leveled it seven different times, every different direction. Once the walls were on everything, it got low. I checked the level again. I noticed as it gets colder and the longer winter goes on, that door opens itself more and more easily. And it'll really get going. Oh, I hit my bed pad. It swings open. It didn't do that when I built it. And it just kind of felt like it wasn't, everything wasn't quite level anymore. So I put a level on the floor this morning. It's probably at least an inch higher on, yeah, on that end, maybe an inch and a half higher on that end than that end. If it was the other direction, it would make sense. These are stumps from huge trees. They're not going anywhere. And the other end is sinking into the dirt or something. But since I put this together, the ground froze. I think what's happening is as the ground freezes, down further and further, it expands. Water, ice expands as it cools, as it gets colder. I think it's lifting that side of the cabin up. And I can't wait to see, come springtime, when that thaws, if it all levels back out. I'm sure it will because that'll thaw and those feet will sink down in the dirt more. But I just wonder, I think it's just the ice. I don't know how far down the permafrost is, but like, you know, if it's at first it was frozen down one foot and now it's frozen down four feet or whatever. I think that's what's lifting it up. Anyway, I'm probably super wrong about that, but that's how it feels in my head. Man, it is getting brisk out there. When I left here to work on the four-wheeler, I took a bunch of my clothes. Clearly, I didn't clean these. I should have. These are disgusting. But I took a bunch of my outer wearing, cleaned it up, laundered some of it. I forgot my big puffy jacket, like my only warm jacket. And now it's, you know, you go out there in the morning, it's four degrees and you got to stand out there when you're already cold and, you know, make French toast or whatever. I just don't have enough clothes for right now. But man, it is, it is fairly nice to have this place, I have to admit. I still long to be in the tent. I'd rather be in a tent than in here, but just the practicality of it. Like this morning when I got up, I woke up at like 3.30 or 4.00 started the stove went back to bed it doesn't get it hot in here when it runs for like five hours might get it up to the low 50s i thought it was <laughs> i thought it was like the high 60s but i took the thermometer around here it's not it just feels a lot warmer but you know i can bring my water in here my coolers in here and then the evening i run the stove for a little bit the morning i run it for a little bit and that's just enough if it's all still in coolers to keep it from freezing too solid interestingly i Got those two 40 pound propane cans over there that run this stove. I've never had this stove turned on when it wasn't on full blast because it just, you know, no insulation and everything frozen in here. It takes so long to heat everything up. But I went back there to check the cans and they were empty. I went out this morning because it's so cold I couldn't go out here and chainsaw or run the camera or anything. So I hauled the uh, propane cans out of here and the four wheeler threw them in my car, went out and filled them and I had five pounds left out of 80. And I've only stayed in here maybe four nights total. A couple times I've been in here working and I'll turn the thing on for a few hours, but if I stay in here when it's really cold, of course I've only used this when it's really cold, otherwise I'd you know, stay in the tent. But man, that sucks, that sucks down a lot of propane. You know, if the temperature's around zero overnight, high in the teens or something, I think I'd go through 80 pounds of propane in like a week. I have to admit, I've got, I'm cutting these trees down from the uh, shooting range because I want to do the shooting range. I need to clear all that out, but I also like to have a bunch of logs laying around here just so if I, when I figure out, the minute I figure out what I want to build, I just start milling. And I do kind of have it in the back of my head. I might want to build a real cabin. It doesn't sound like that much fun because it, I'm just finishing this now and to do it over again. I don't know if I had the energy for it, but legally around here, I think you can build up to 200 square feet without any permitting. This place is a little under 100, 
I was thinking if I, if I could do something twice this big, man, it'd be so much work. Everything's bigger, the beams are bigger, the rafters are bigger, the joists are bigger. I bet it'd take five months to build, doing it by myself, cutting down the trees, making all the lumber with the chainsaw. Anyway, it's just going through my head. Don't tell anybody I'm thinking about it, all right? Something in my cap. Wouldn't bash my head up. Wow, that'd be a lot of space to throw stuff up there. Sounds good, let's do it. Curses. No battery. Must be getting late. It's kind of getting hard to see. Don't these lanterns just put out the best light? Love it. <laughs> I measured up from the floor for both sides that's level and this one's not and that's because the floor is not level anymore well i don't think my sleeping bag cares if it's at a little bit of an angle not bad probably not going to do a pull up on it but should hold some uh goose down back to chainsaw tomorrow morning and uh supposed to be some patches of snow on and off so uh we get snow, I'll come in here, turn the heater on, and see if I can cut the wire mesh to fit around that, staple it up here or something. It sure would be nice if it would stop snowing. It's just been continuous light snow. I figured if I was going to get wet, I might as well be by a fire and get rid of some of this stuff. I feel pretty confident there's a fire pit in there somewhere. Oh yeah, you can see one of the rocks right there. Hey, it's mostly in the fire pit, no problem. Well, finished my podcast, finished burning this stuff up, and I guess just go chainsaw for a while. I'm listening to uh, The Way I Heard It by uh, Mike Rowe and his buddy. I love Mike Rowe, such a great guy. It's a good podcast. If you haven't heard it, definitely check it out. Not that far, it's only like 20 feet to the trail, but walking back and forth through the deep snow to carry every branch over to the trailer is not worth it. So let's try out the new winch. I do not like to have smelly food in my tent and I had plans of not cooking in here or anything just to get animal problems if it smells too good but you know when it's snowing and you could come in here and kick the heater on for a second it's very hard to pass up but as soon as it's not snowing or it's above uh, seven degrees I definitely won't be cooking and eating in here mm. it's good I always hate stopping what I'm doing to eat, but that's tasty.
I tell you what, after taking two, three weeks away from this place and sitting around on the cold concrete and wrenching on four wheelers and stuff, I am out of shape. It's surprising. <laughs> I've been able to do this easily 10, 10 hours a day without stopping, you know, without stopping for more than five minutes to eat a granola bar for months and years. And taking a break like that is, uh, I just don't have the don't have the energy. I wonder how long it's going to take to come back. But I think it's like six o'clock. So uh, I've got, I think I have two or three emergency showers left over from uh, the beginning of the winter. Just my five gallon buckets filled all the way up in their frozen solid as ice blocks, but they just barely fit inside my pan that I shower from, put on that big uh, burner. I think I'm going to go dig one of those out. I, I can use a shower. Just holding the camera up like this, it's like bats and bugs flying up out of shower time. Pretty sure my shower's in here somewhere. Oh yeah. There's my, there's my pot. <laughs> Ooh, blue ice. Where did I get blue ice? That's weird. That's that should be swamp water. Huh. Well, there there is a shower in there. There it is. <laughs> These do happen to be a few ounces bigger than that pot. So instead of sticking the whole thing in and then having to watch it so it doesn't overflow, I'm wondering if I could bust it up. It's a good thing I got my helmet on so I don't lose an eye. Oh yeah. There we go. Ooh, that is some nice, nice ice. Super clear. I've been thinking about trying to chainsaw carve one of these. Isn't it funny to look at this and think, I'm going to use that to clean my body, and it's going to feel great. All right, that's all you need to watch of this. It's going to get, it's going to get real ugly real fast. See you tomorrow, maybe. Holy schmoly. It's amazing how much better you sleep when you're clean. That was, that had to be top, one of my top 10 showers of all time. It's gorgeous. Well, it's uh, super calm and no snow on the forecast, so let's get back to pulling logs. I got the whole day. I gotta admit, I am freaking beat. <laughs> Even those big fat muscles in your that move your thumb around in your palm on both my hands. I got a, this morning. I could barely pick up my pillow. They were so sore, just from uh, I think just from the chainsaw and. Uh, picking logs up and stuff holy cow they're loosening up a little bit now so let's just go ahead and beat the pain out somebody burned a hole in the seat what a joke now we're actually going to get some good melon trees out i think uh these two here will be pretty nice and there are a few in that bunch that'll be good. I, you can see I left a whole bunch last night. I just hit a wall. It's just like all of a sudden I was like, nope, <laughs> can't do any more of this. <laughs> it's probably because once I get started on something like this, I just don't want to stop and I don't generally eat enough. So the bonk comes pretty hard. I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is great. This is, holy crap. I don't think I'm going to live through this. And I just have to leave everything and take off and go make myself eat something. I gotta say, I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with this machine so far. I mean, it's only been a few days. I've only run a tank of gas through it, but uh, I was a little afraid these tires wouldn't have as good a traction as my last machine, but they grab pretty well in the snow. It's got good power. It's a lot more responsive than my old machine. And I put a Culpin winch on it. I think this is a 2,500 pound winch. And my old machine, I had a 2,000 or 2,500 pound winch on it, but it was a tractor supply or harbor freight winch or whatever, and it, it worked fine. I burned out 
I burned out one in the first year and I think the second one in the second year was getting close to being toast so hopefully this thing will last a lot longer it definitely for the same rating it pulls a lot more a lot steadier without bogging way down so I don't know I guess there's a sometimes a reason to spend money god I hate spending money it's funny to have a brand new four-wheeler and when you see it you go hey oh oh <laughs> it's like hey that's cool I can't wait to ah uh, I gotta pay for that thing I just, I, I equate every dollar spent with a dollar you got to be working in some way to pay for it. And clearly I'd rather not be working at all. This doesn't count as work, but you know, the money's got to come from somewhere. So I generally opt for cheap used stuff. Causes a lot more headaches, but I'd rather have those kind of headaches than spending a minute at a job I don't like. What makes me happier than uh, a new four-wheeler? A huge pile of logs. Just think of all the stuff you could make with those. Look at all the good stuff in there. Can you see it? That is a big pile of fun. is a nice fairly straight one however it kind of pains me when you have something that starts out really fat and tapers down really fast because then the, the longer the log you cut the more waste you have at the fat side because that first cut you make goes like this all the way down so this is just a bunch of waste over here I mean I don't know who's in charge of growing shoot trees around here but they need to really get their act together or I'm not gonna be able to build as much stuff as I want to, you know? I haven't seen the manager around lately, but when I see him, he's gonna get a, he's gonna get a, what's that thing called? Ear, earful, that's what he's gonna get. Now the trees are getting big enough that this would be nice to run through a chipper. Uh, I don't know if it's worth trying to do that out here in the snow or not. I think I'll just keep cutting them and, and burning them for now. I do prefer not to uh, burn any more than I have to. If nothing else, you can chip this stuff up and use the wood chips. You know, I could do this whole shooting range in wood chips. That'd be nice. Plus all that material goes back, biodegrades into the ground. And okay, now that I'm saying that, I feel guilty. Like maybe, maybe I should chip these. Man, if only I hadn't said that on film then, I could have got away with it. All right, I'll chip it. I'll chip it. Hey, I'm back off. I'll chip it. <laughs> Started snowing again, so here we go. Those are stabby. <laughs> I wanted this to fit so perfectly, but it's just so stabby. I will get it. <sighs> that was not a good idea. <laughs> I had to trim her down a little bit. 
It'll work though, if I don't lose an eyeball. I probably have glasses on doing this, this is scary. Truthfully, I think I could build a bowling alley from trees in the forest faster than make this stupid drying rack. <laughs> it's a, a trick to get all this stuff to fit right and not to rip holes in all your stuff. And I'm not sure I've succeeded on either. Figured the least I could do is gorilla tape the edges and might save me a uh, down jacket or a pair of socks. Nice thing is, it really calmed down and cleared up. Not a breath of wind. <laughs> Check out these icicles. I guess that's what you get when you don't insulate your roof. Holy cow, look at that thing. I should probably bust them off of there. You can also see there's about three inches of solid ice on the roof there. I'm not sure exactly which uh, problems that's going to create, but uh, I'm sure there will be one. Let's see what the other side looks like. Oh yeah, that's pretty good too. Wow. Those are cool. Whoa, I don't think I've ever seen an icicle with a crook in it before. I saw those really start growing yesterday and I thought I should probably knock them off of there, but I just kind of want to see how big they get. Who cares if it ruins the roof? Will it ruin the roof? I don't know. Probably. Perfection, just like everything I build, just spot on. All right, got about uh, 12 minutes before I go to bed and try to dry my sleeping bag out. Well, this is the third winter that I've been out here. I guess the first winter I've been here for half the time, but the one thing that really limits camping all winter is being able to dry this stuff out. You know, it's a pain having your water freeze and all that kind of stuff, but there are ways around that. They're just, until right now, there's been no way to drive my sleeping bag out. Oh, look at that. That's just gorgeous. By the end of the day, my pants get all soaking wet. Don't have any way to dry those either, so I'll get changed early and uh, throw those up there. I really don't use the heater at all during the night time, but I run it, you know, in the evening for a couple hours and in the morning for a couple hours so that'll at least get me back to uh not soaked this is really exciting it might not seem exciting to you but it's really it's really exciting i just slept i think 10 hours without moving <laughs> i'm trying to get the gumption to cut some more trees i figure i'm about halfway through that uh shooting range wood lot uh I probably Probably just do the rest of today and then uh, I want to mill up some of those logs because I want to get some more of this put together. I figure I can mill maybe three small logs, like five or six foot logs, and then get all the shelves in here and be more or less completely done with this. But I need a break, so I'm going on a shoot and walk about. I've been trying to do one lap a day on the new shooting range if you guys haven't seen that. I was uh, one or two videos ago when Tito and I went out and there's a whole trail system that I put in all through here and there's one giant loop that's uh, targets all the way through steel targets really fun so I gotta do my loop eat some breakfast by then it'll be noon or something then we'll get back to cutting takes about three scoops to make the lap. Just about what I got left. All right, back to wood cutting and a few. I just checked the weather and the next five days are supposed to be high 30s and low 40s. One night it's a low of 36. Unbelievable, so I think I, uh, think I might have survived another winter out here. It sure was a lot easier being in here, so uh, three winters and a total of one week inside. I'm actually kind of starting to like this place. I mean, you kind of get used to whatever. I've always found throughout my life that I don't get as much satisfaction out of anything unless I put in some hours of discomfort or I guess what some people would call suffering. I find that I don't 
I don't appreciate the heat if I'm not cold for a long time. I don't appreciate days of rest unless I'm really whipped. So it is, I mean, it's a lot easier to be in here so I can uh, make my coffee without getting fully dressed for the snow. I can read a book without my fingertips going numb, but I don't know. I, think, I still think I'd rather, I prefer to be in the tent. Then I, gosh, I just so appreciate being in the tent, waking up cold and turning the little tiny heater on and getting it up to like 95 degrees and feeling that heat. I don't know, there's, some, there's just something about being in a tent and living in a tent that I, that I absolutely love. We'll see. It's going to be summer in like eight minutes, so back to the tent quite, quite shortly. It's nice uh, now that the building's here, you can shoot the first, the first target right from the door. It's also nice that when I'm firing, all the snow's falling off the tent. <laughs> God, it's fun out here. Why would anybody live anywhere other than in the woods alone? Why? No reason I can think of. It's a perfect day. Sunny, 30, and there's shooting to be done and French toast to be eaten. Urgh. Well, got this stand of three, which is uh, interesting with cedars. I don't know if you can tell, but all the uh, branches are grown together up there. So I might have to cut them all three at the same time. I'll cut the, uh, the front two, get them so they're trying to fall over and they probably won't, and then cut the back one. The downside of cutting three at, a, at the same time is that is such a snarl of branches to work through, you know, to limb all those up and get them pulled out while the other trees are laying on top of them and whatnot. So hopefully you don't have to do all three, but I think at least those two are going to have to go. Sometimes that's the only way to do it, unless you got a uh, tractor or something to pull them over. Cut one and get it going kind of where you want to, and then stay out of the way of it while you cut the other. Couldn't quite reach my bar all the way in there, but the cut still came out pretty nicely. Right now while I'm doing this, I'm listening to a book on uh, Abraham Lincoln and the Civil War. It's pretty fascinating. What better way to spend a day, you know? You know? Well, as much as I hate to do it on such a beautiful day, if I don't uh, run out to the library now, you guys aren't getting a video of some schmo screwing around in the woods. We've got a couple more, several more beautiful days on the way. Come back next week, we'll uh, maybe finish cutting a couple trees and then start in on that pile of logs, which I can't wait to make stuff out of. So much good building to do. I can't help myself. Delicious. So till next week. Thanks for watching. <laughs>